The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Two weeks and two oceans since their last race, and the Indy cars have found paradise. Surfers Paradise Australia will today be the factory of speed for the teams chasing the PPG Championship. The long straights that parallel the Pacific Ocean slam down to tight corners. The veterans use the track to win. For the rookies, it will be a long day at IndyCar School. Take Alex Zanardi on the pole in Rio. Or Greg Moore, who led for 28 laps at Rio. Is it a rookie's day to win and find paradise in Australia? Surfer's Paradise for the Australian IndyCar Grand Prix. Blue skies overhead, a nice ocean breeze, warm temperatures, and this is the main event after a week-long festival here in Surfer's Paradise. Well, this IndyCar championship fight is very close. As we came here for qualifying, Scott Pruitt had 26 points, leading the championship by a single point. Yeah, but Jimmy Bassard yesterday, in the last few minutes of qualifying, posted a really quick lap, steals the pole, gets the one point, and he ties the championship, and he and Scott Pruitt are starting on the front row. In the second row, Alex Zanardi. Remember, he led the most laps at Rio and started on the pole, but he's an ex-Formula One driver, a road racer, and this is the first road circuit of the season. Over the last couple of days, though, I've been talking to the guys. What they're all concerned about is coming away from Australia with a couple of points. And that championship, they don't want it to slip away. And speaking of guys who need points, what about former winners here, Paul Tracy and Michael Andretti? Between them, they share six points. All in all, it will make for a very interesting afternoon here at Surfers as the Indy cars run the straights that parallel the Pacific Ocean. Now let's take a look at the starting grid here in the first row on the pole is Jimmy Vassar. His first career pole comes with a new track record. Alongside is Scott Pruitt, making his first career start from the front row. In the second row, Alex Zanardi, the leading rookie contender, and Paul Tracy, the defending champion at Surfers Paradise. In row three, Michael Andretti, who won here in 94, and Christian Fittipaldi, Michael's teammate, with his first top 10 start of the year. In row four, Parker Johnstone, who crashed during the morning warm-up session, but they've got the car back together and ready to go. And Greg Moore. He led late in the race at Rio until his engine failed. In the fifth row, Andre Ribeiro earned his second career win before his countrymen at Rio. And Adrian Fernandez, who starts alongside his teammate. The sixth row, Mauricio Guzman, who finished fourth here last year. And Jill DeFerrin, who has two top ten finishes this season. In the seventh row, Bobby Rahal has second place finishes here, two of them, one of them last year. And Robbie Gordon. In the eighth row, Raul Boisel and Al Unser Jr. The ninth row, Brian Herta and Emerson Fittipaldi, the 92 winner here. The tenth row, Roberto Moreno and Stefan Johansson. In the eleventh row, Carlos Guerrero and Eddie Lawson. The twelfth row, Juan Fangio and Jeff Brosnan. And alone in the thirteenth row, Hiro Matsushita. Now, Jack Aruth, this is a temporary road circuit, and that puts a premium on the technical aspects. Paul, it is brutal on the cars. Consider these facts. You're up and down through the gearbox 30 times a lap. You're on the brakes 10 times a lap, five times real, real hard. But the big story this weekend so far has been the emergence of Firestone. They've proven that they have an excellent oval track tire. They've brought a brand new road racing tire here, and it is very quick. In fact, one of the Goodyear drivers, Paul Tracy, says the Firestones account for an advantage of over three seconds a lap. Now, joining us today is a former IndyCar driver, Jan Bikas. Jack, the crews, when they came here for this first street circuit of 1996, trying to find the setup, they had to keep the driving style in mind. You see, some drivers here love to pound across the curbs and the chicanes to save just a little bit of distance. Other drivers choose to miss those curbs entirely. Now, we know that Michael Andretti, he's one of those drivers that loves to fly spectacularly through some of those chicanes. Now, his crew is hoping that for 65 laps, both he and his car will be able to take that kind of punishment. Paul? All right, the track here is very long, very exciting. Well, this track is 2.8 miles in length. It's got a lot of straightaways, a lot of tight corners, and a lot of chicanes. 
and with that comes a lot of curbs, and you're going to see these guys jumping over the curbs in the chicane and in some of the corners. It's a very physical track. Here's the field breakdown of chassis, engines, and tires. Chassis led by Renard. Of course, those combinations so very important. Stories here today that we're looking at, winning, winning combination. Uh, the Reynard firestone honda combination seems to be very powerful. What about the rookies here today? Remember that uh, both Nigel Mansell and John Andretti scored their first ever victories at this track. And the rookies do as well. Championship points fight. We've already said that it's very close. And the toll of the track. Danny points out it's a rough circuit. It can beat up a race car and a driver very quickly. And of course, those concrete walls right alongside the edge of the track all the way. So we are getting set to go racing right now. There are the two participants in the front row. The tie in the championship, Vassar and Pruitt. And the crowd here is really magnificent. It's built every year. This has to be the largest crowd ever. And with the beautiful weather we've had here, it's just been a continuation of what they have called Indy Carnival. So here now they make the final turn. This should put them onto the pit straight and into alignment, and we should be ready to go. That's the final turn, the pit straight lies ahead. Look at that crowd. Well, they're way out there in front like that. I don't know if we're gonna get a green on this no, one. No, not at all. He, he's jumped out. Getting into alignment right after that turn is difficult, and Jimmy jumped way ahead. Sometimes they do that on purpose. If fuel is a factor, which I'm not sure it is here, they'll, they'll jump it so they can have one slow lap because now that the clock has started, they've started that as a race. They count that lap even though it's yellow. We're gonna listen in today, and as Danny says, this lap does in fact count. We're gonna be listening in today to a couple of the radios, uh, most notably at the moment we've opened up the uh, the frequency to Jimmy Vassar, and we'll just listen to him and see what uh, he may be saying, uh, if anything, or if, as Danny suggests, that's part of the uh, whole tactics of this thing. Same time, we're also monitoring the frequency of Scott Pruitt. Scott's be talking with uh, their team manager for Patrick Racing, Jim McGee. Vassar Scott, uh, they want you to stay right up with Vassar if you can on the next time. Took a big jump right at the start. Well, that's Jim McGee and Scott Pruitt talking. And I'd like to say something about that. It's uh, uh, Jimmy obviously wants to get the jump. The start's very critical here. But when you see him come out of that last corner, it's very tight back there. And it's hard to time when everybody is through that corner and, and lined up in the proper uh, order. And I think he just wanted to get a little bit of jump down there. Of course, we go down that straightaway. We've got a little bit of a bend to the right hand and then you break hard into a left-hander, and of course he's chosen the inside, so he doesn't want to lose any ground down there. In IndyCar racing on the road course, the pole sitter has his choice of where he wants to start, right or left-hand side, and Jimmy Vassar has chosen what is the inside for the first set of corners here. 161 cubic inch turbocharged engines, 1,550 pounds, these IndyCars, 13 rows. <laughs> 10-4, 10-4. Tom Anderson talking with Jimmy Vassar. So this lap does count. Danny Sullivan suggests it might in fact be a tactic to help lengthen out the fuel here today. Certainly weather will not be a factor, except it will add to the enjoyment of everyone here because it is absolutely beautiful here on the Gold Coast. Let's go to Jan Beacons. One of the things that you just mentioned was exactly what went through my mind, and that is that many of these drivers may have jumped the start on purpose. They're very concerned about fuel here, and it wouldn't hurt them just to have one wave off. It'll save them quite a bit of fuel doing one more slow lap. There you get an idea of how this circuit winds in and out of the uh, luxury condominiums and hotels here. Now are we going to get a start? They come into the rows of two as they come off the corner. Vassar stays back, rest of the field crowds up on him. Boy, they're jump bundled up there and they're going slow. Here he goes. He's jumped it a little bit there. Good start for Jimmy. And green flag is out. From Jim Twin 
Mattel as they head down. Start jamming down the gears and brakes into the first set of corners at a chicane. Very tight maneuvering through here. Master has the lead, followed by Pruitt. One thing we saw in practice this morning is everybody's very conscious of that first lap. They don't want to knock the nose off. In fact, a lot of the teams were down there practicing changing noses uh, just for, for that reason. Paul Tracy has jumped up and challenged for third. He's gotten around Alex Zanardi. And so Paul Tracy moves into third place. Zanardi is fourth. Here they come along, paralleling the Pacific. See Paul Tracy jumped up in the third spot there. Michael Andretti has moved up as well. That yellow and red car, of course at the front, is Jimmy Vassar, followed by the white, red, and blue. The colors for Scott Pruitt as Scott tucks his nose in, looks for some room. Scott's really pushing him there. He's all over him on this first lap. Keeping track of Scott Pruitt on the uh, two-way radios with his car. And coming to the conclusion of the first lap of racing, but the second lap of the run. Look at the fuel, Scott, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock on the fuel, that's a mapping setting? That's a mapping setting for his fuel mixture. And what that means is they'll start it probably at 100%, so he's got the full amount of fuel for the start, and then they'll start turning it down a little bit as the field settle, settles down. But you can see he's right there with Jimmy Vassar. Call coming in from uh, from Pruitt just because we can't receive it. Nine o'clock on the fuel, Scott. Nine o'clock. The valve's open too. The valve's open. They can see that the uh, that the valve on uh, the turbocharger is. Well, they've got the telemetry in the pit, so it sends a signal back to the pit. And what they're saying is you're you're just bleeding that valve off just a little bit. You're up there just a little bit. Turn it down because once that dumps off, you lose so much ground. And on the fuel, they're trying to get it down so that he's a little bit more conservative so he can go the distance. Nine o'clock on the fuel, Scott. Nine o'clock. He keeps telling him, which obviously means that Scott hasn't turned it down. I think Scott's busy here. He doesn't want to lose any ground to Jimmy. Let's go to the pits and Jack. Well, Paul, you talk about the telemetry. Now, pit road, the wall is just about up here. But what happens is back here, is another row. That's where all the telemetry is. And on a computer readout is everything that the driver would see on the dash as well. So what they're able to do is actually tell the performance, Danny, as you said, of the engine, and specifically how the valve is operating. No longer does a driver have to listen to hear it pop off. Actually, the telemetry will tell you. Well, that's right, Jack. And one of the other things, too, is that they don't want to be looking at the dash too much right now. They're trying to focus on what's going on in that car and around them, if they take their eyes off and look at that dash too much, they're liable to clip a wall. So they're really focusing, especially in these early laps right now, on that car in front of them or what they're doing. So Jimmy Vassar jumps into the lead at the start from the pole, followed by Scott Pruitt, Paul Tracy, Alex Sonardi, Michael Andretti, and Christian Fittipaldi. This is part of the No Fear Air Show that uh, performed for the crowd right over the beach here just before the start of the race. Precision aerobatic flying. The roads are getting rougher and the chores are just getting tougher. You're working harder than ever. You need a truck that does too. Meet the all new 1997 Ford F-150. It throws an even longer shadow with a wider stance and the largest V8 payload on the job. Plus an all new suspension that loves abuse. After all, the ground's not getting any softer. The new Ford F-150, strength after strength after strength. Here at Firestone, we know what it takes to get your attention. One heck of a tire. A Firestone tire with all the warranty you'd ever want, plus... One heck of a price. You got it.